I don't really know when I fell asleep. I was just aware at some point of something warm pressing against me, rising and falling gently. <gasps> we have been blessed this day. Ah, this is so cute. Look at these Coopers. Oh, I love this so much. Look at them with their pointy ears. Precious BBs. Something wrapped around me that, even in the dreamless fog of sleep, made me feel safe. And away from home, away from fairies and family and everything else, I slept soundly for the first time in a very long time. No dreams, no sleepwalking, no waking up to fear and anxiety. Just a tingling warmth that stayed with me through the entire night. Also, I don't know if you guys can hear the bang, 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 bang. <laughs> but my husband's doing renovations upstairs. If you hear a bang, 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 that's what it is. Quiet up there. <laughs> There's romance happening down below. Just a tingling warmth that stayed with me through the entire night. I was in a sort of half-sleep, cradled against a very bony pillow. Really? I would not think of him as being bony, but okay. Part of me was aware of the soft sound of someone breathing. The rest of me was more or less asleep-ish. It's kind of nice being in this fuzzy space between sleeping and waking. Much nicer than being jolted awake by... Nora! Ah! <laughs> I bolted upright, got myself tangled in... something. Which I realized a split second too late was basically Ewan, and tumbled off the side of the sofa. I hit the floor with a thud, half dragging Ewan with me. Morning. Ow! Ugh. Wait, that was... Oops. <laughs> well. I glanced down to find Ewan's, um, head in my lap. Oh. Sorry! Uh, sorry! Had no idea how I managed that. I scrambled up frantically trying to hand off the head. Um, you can have this back. Thank you. I've been waiting for you to wake up for a while now. Uh-huh. His voice always took on a strangely hollow sound when his head was disconnected. It was funny in a way. And this was officially the weirdest way to wake up ever. And, of course, Allie was being incredibly helpful as she gripped the other side of the sofa, laughing hysterically. You two are seriously the best combination! Alright, well we know what Allie's list looks like. Shut, Shut up, up Allie. Allie! She just laughed at us both. Meh. I rubbed my head, biting back another yawn. So, what's, um, happening with everything? I haven't heard from Drayson since pretty early this morning. What did he say? Well, it was close to three in the morning, and all he said was, I see what Nora means. Okay, well that was that... the time. That's usually the time when Spencer starts being strange, er... That's it? I stood quickly, the last dregs of sleep draining away. We need to go check... Just calm down. Maybe he's still asleep. He is pretending to be you, but sick. Yeah, maybe he is asleep. And maybe my crazy fairy-possessed brother killed him in his sleep. That escalated quickly. I don't think Spencer has regressed to being capable of murder just yet. Girl, you don't know the endings I've seen. Yeah, you haven't seen how creepy he's been lately. I seriously don't know how you people can be so calm about all this. Well, I know this all seems dramatic and upsetting for you, but, well... We're kind of used to it. That's not reassuring. Look, you stay here. I'll go check it out and see what's going on. We can't really have an extra Nora showing up at your house. I'm not the extra. I'm the real one, thank you very much. Okay, didn't even need that. I'm like, did we forget that both Danny and Elliot were keeping an eye on things as well? We could have just asked them, like, hey, did you hear any death murders in the middle of the night? 
The door to the library suddenly slammed open and a familiar pink-headed unicorn burst into the club room. Ewan! Big problem! Is that... Drayson. Um... Drayson, what on earth did you do? <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> you just, like, dragged him- Oh, no. Ugh. Well, I guess we're doing this now. What the hell is going on? Put me down! He saw me. I mean, the glamour kind of started to fade and he saw it, and I just... Did you kidnap my brother? I didn't know what else to do. I said put me down! Startled, Drayson did just that. And Spencer stood there, red face, glaring at everyone, looking like he might bolt for the door any second. Did you really carry him all the way here over your shoulder like that? Better yet, how did you carry him all the way here? Well, I mean, he is kind of a horse. Sort of. And as long as you're a virgin. TMI. I didn't. I no. I didn't need to know. Didn't. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Well, that definitely describes Spencer. Will someone tell me what the hell is going on here? I guess now is as good a time as any. Why don't you sit down? This may take a while. <laughs> Wow, okay, well that escalated very quickly. Chapter 9, Road to Fairy. Oh good, we're gonna go back to Fairy. Let's, let's do that. It uh, took a little while to convince Spencer that no one was going to eat him, maim him, kill him, or basically do any other horrible thing to him. He also wasn't convinced Drayson was a unicorn, which nearly sent Drayson to tears until Ewan took him out to calm him down. I'm sorry, the the mental picture of Drayson just like bursting into tears, sobbing, running outside. Was like, why won't you believe that I'm a unicorn? It's so funny to me. Oh, Drayson, you're too extra. Oh, I'm dying. Poor, sensitive little soul. Uh, Spencer was desperately trying to have his aha moment, but was too terrified to actually do much aha in at having caught me out in all my evil secrets. Instead, he was huddled on one end of the sofa, looking like he might cry as well. I mean, I knew. I knew that Nora wasn't normal, that there were weird things happening. I didn't expect all this. I didn't expect you to be a part of it. Then it's time to change your expectations. Good people exist on this side of things, Spencer. Like me, Drayson, Ewan. And me. I was getting to you. I should have been at the top of the list, thank you very much. Hey, you're not the boss of me. I should be that too. I should have known the two of you wouldn't take any of this seriously. Hey, I'm taking this seriously. You creeped around my bedroom for like three nights like a possessed stalker. I'm completely serious. Spencer looked away awkwardly. I don't... remember doing anything like that. Yeah, that's why you look like a puppy that just got caught doing something naughty. <laughs> he glared at me. I just remember having strange dreams the last few nights. Stranger than usual. Faye often work through dreams, so that part's not all that strange. There you go about fairies again. Are you even serious with that? Fairies, unicorns. That stuff is all real. I don't believe that. Send in the Headless Man! So help me, if you don't stop being a pain, I'm going to drag you in back in here, yank his head off, and beat you to death with it! Dang! Poor Ewan. You're going to do what with my head now? Wow, Nora, that was kind of extreme. Shut up. 
Spencer, you may not believe us, but for the record, you and his fae. A Dullahan, to be precise, though I staunchly object to any part of my body being used as a murder weapon. A Dullahan? Headless Horseman. He rolled his eyes. Yeah, right. Well? Is this guy even serious? After everything he's seen, he's going to sit there and say he doesn't believe us. Just because I've seen some weird stuff doesn't mean I'm going to believe fairies are real or whatever else you people want to try to tell me. I'm not going to believe something stupid like headless horsemen exist. Give me a break. I want the truth, not some stupid lie. So you'll only believe what you see, then? I really hope Spencer passes out as well after seeing this. It'll just be... Full circle. Alright, you asked for it. He set his hand on the top of his head, and... You and I don't think that's actually a good... No, I think this is one time it's warranted. I thought you couldn't control... He gave his head a solid yank, and with a distressingly... Uh, squishy sound. The flesh pulled apart and a spiral of green smoke escaped. He gets much better at it when he's mad. I can see that. Well then. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, uh. Not sure what he'd been thinking of saying to that little demonstration, but before he could get anything out, his eyes rolled back and he slumped down on the sofa. Like sister, like brother. Ewan just let out a very annoyed sigh. <sighs> well, this has gone well. Thanks a lot, Ewan. I'm here to help. You'd think, given everything he's been through, he'd be a bit more immune to the shock, wouldn't you? I wonder if the fainting thing is genetic. Very funny. Now we have to wait for him to wake back up. Maybe he'll be a bit more reasonable when he does. Based on what I've seen so far, I wouldn't count on it. Then we'll have to keep trying until he listens. Stubbornness only goes so far. He'll eventually have to listen. I hoped. I'm not saying I believe you yet. I just... Until a few days ago, Nora was a changeling. That's right. I did read that in your journal. Wait, what?! You read that? I... I was looking for answers! You aren't even supposed to be able to read that code anymore! You said you forgot it! He shifted uncomfortably. I couldn't believe he'd snooped my journal, much less actually lied to me about our code. That hurt my feelings so much back then, too. The idea that he'd forgotten something that had been just for the two of us. That moment was probably when I'd really had to face the fact that he hated me. Jerk. I don't know what all Nora wrote in that journal, but if you read it, then surely you are kind of understanding what's happening here. I didn't... think it was real. I thought she was just writing things to throw me off. I mean, there was so much weird stuff in there. Jeez, what do you take me for here? I thought you were... I mean... an imposter. I sighed softly. <sighs> well, in the end, you weren't wrong, in a way. But I don't get it. If you were a changeling, why... I mean... That Nora was an imposter, right? And you're the real one. But then how do you remember everything? Yeah, the whole changeling thing is a bit more complicated than that. Let's just say I was part imposter and part real Nora. And now I'm all real Nora. That soul transfer stuff. Yeah. Then what about, um, him? I mean, he was you. Right up until he, you know, kidnapped me. Drayson gave him a sheepish smile as he toyed with the end of his braid. Sorry about that. I just panicked a little. That was technically Allie's fault anyway. Hey! 
You're the one that suggested a spy. A spy? We weren't sure what was going on with you since you started sleepwalking. Ali suggested we have someone stay in the house and pretend to be me. That way we could work out who the fairies are targeting now. Drayson has nothing to do with the changeling thing, though. I guess that explains why you spent all evening calling me Winston. Sorry. Sorry, I couldn't remember your name. And I still don't understand what you mean by targeting. Well... It seems like the Fae are pretty reluctant to let Nora go. We're not totally sure why, since there could be a lot of reasons. Regardless, they've been influencing you while you sleep, and we weren't sure what they were planning. We still don't know, really. Well, I think if they just wanted Spencer as some kind of revenge, they'd have him leave the house. But instead, it seems like he was trying to get in Nora's room. Either they want to use him to get her, or... He did try to go outside several times. I was going to say that... Maybe they're targeting you both. Look, I don't know if I buy all this. I mean, I guess some of it aligns with things I've seen myself. But if the f Fae want to kidnap us or something, aren't they being kind of ineffectual? I mean, you guys are saying they control me when I sleep. Can't they just have me wander off to wherever they want to take me? They may be able to influence you in your sleep, but that doesn't mean they can just control you like a puppet. So carting you off to the nearest gate might not be that easy. Yet. I mean, I was literally trapped in a fairy's body, and she didn't manage to make me walk off in the middle of the night either. I always woke up before getting too far away. In any case, it's more likely they're looking for some way to trick you both into another contract. It's the surest way to make certain you don't escape again. Another... contract? I feel like I'm still missing pieces of the puzzle here. Basically, fairies enter into some kind of contract with a family or individual before they do the whole changeling thing. We're assuming that somehow I was entered into this changeling contract as a child. They swapped me out, partially, because they don't just nab you and run off these days. No, no, that's the old-fashioned way of doing things. They play a lovely little game of musical chairs with your soul, then use you as camouflage so their kidnapper doesn't get caught out. Because fairies suck at acting human. So that's why you were able to change like that. Change? I mean, you know, your face and stuff. Your hair. Now I'm the one confused. What are you talking about? When did I do that? Well, five years ago, for one. When... when my eye... He put two fingers up to his injured eye, sighing softly. I don't remember what happened back then, Spencer. I really don't. I know you haven't ever believed me, but... If what you're saying now is true, then I guess it might make sense you wouldn't remember. Will you tell me what happened? What you saw back then? He chewed the inside of his cheek for a minute before he finally seemed to find some sort of resolve. Well, thank goodness. I'm glad we don't spend the last two chapters trying to wear you down again. Fine. I'll tell you what... what really happened back then. I tried to tell people so many times, but no one believed me. I'll believe you. I mean, we all will. At this point, none of us really has a reason to lie anymore. And I want to... no. I think I need to know what happened. Because now I knew there really was a monster involved. It might not have been me, but I'd been trapped in her body at the time. Well, that day I was out looking for you, you know, with some of the adults. Mom didn't want me to go, but I wanted to. I mean, I wanted to find you, to bring you home. I heard voices in the woods, and... And it was the same voices we'd always heard as kids. I hadn't thought of that in so long. I mean, I guess it had just faded to the point I didn't think it was real. His voice trembled slightly as he spoke of it. 
I wanted so badly to reach out, take his hands, tell him it was okay. But instead it was Allie who took his hand and gave it a gentle squeeze. Go get it, Allie! I bit my lip and looked away. When I heard those voices, I just... felt really scared. None of the adults could hear them, though. And I just knew something was really, really wrong. I went off on my own, following the sound. And I stumbled into this clearing where I saw... Well, I don't know. I guess... A fae. Her. The changeling. She was tall, with white hair and... Um... Horns like this. He indicated with slightly curved motions near his forehead. She was just there. Surrounded by lights. I guess I mean maybe those were fairies too or something. But when they saw me, it was suddenly you standing there staring at me. But it... I don't know. It was you, but it wasn't. I remember thinking that you looked like a complete stranger in that moment. Then all the lights rushed at me and I ran off into the trees. They were screaming, pulling at my hair. One of them... He touched his eye again, trailing off as he stared down at the floor. So that's why you thought I was an imposter all this time. I mean, if you saw her change like that... I can only imagine what went through your head when you saw Drayson's glamour falter. Yeah. Well... I knew something was weird about that version of you anyway. I've never seen you that... bouncy. Ever. Mom was convinced you were completely delirious with fever. That's why she made you stay home again. Sane of which, if she comes home and we're not there, she is going to freak out. That's true. But... I don't know about going home. Is it even safe? Well, now that we're on the same page about everything, handling this should be a little easier. Nora, if you still have the St. John's wart we gave you before, I'd recommend putting it around both your rooms. Should keep things out for at least one night. And the rest of us can work on a more permanent solution to all this. It may not need to be that permanent. Keep in mind that Samhain is just around the corner. What's that? <laughs> Here, since you like to read my journal, I'll just give this to you and you can read it for yourself. Bleh. All right, where are you, Samhain? No, no. There we go. Samhain is an ancient holiday with pagan roots. It's meant to end the harvest season and ring in winter, so it begins at sundown on the last day of October and ends at sundown on the 1st of November. Like in several other ancient cultures, the Celtic day went from sundown to sundown instead of sunrise to sunrise. Samhain coincides with an increase in atmospheric magic across the globe and a sharp spike in paranormal activity, so it's an important day to the paranormal community. Well, it's a pagan holiday, actually. But the reason it's important is that, well, there are these magic current thingies that flow everywhere, and apparently they overflow at certain times of year, which makes all paranormal things go nuts. Spencer shot Allie a curious look. That's the basic gist of it. Fairies are inherently magical. Obviously, they become way more active at this time of year. In addition, the boundaries of fairy expand. There is already a big overlap between Fairy and the real world here in Pine Hollow. It gets even bigger this time of year. Wait. Fairies are the creatures, but they're from a place that's also called Fairy. Did they name themselves after their homeland or the other way around? Because that's pretty stuck up. Not the point. <laughs> he looked at Allie, raising an eyebrow. They're distressingly similar when he's not being angry at everything, aren't they? Hey! You have no idea. Ahem! Hello! We can hear you, I hope you know. Anyway? Yes, anyway. 
What I was trying to say is that there are also several fairy gates in the area that open up this time of year. Paths that go straight into the heart of fairy. And it's easier to open up random gates to there in general. That may explain why they're so determined to try to get to you now. This is the easiest time of year to drag mortals to fairy. But... If we can hold out for a few days, that'll be all be over. A lot can happen in a few days. But it won't. Look, we'll get the two of you back home before your mom gets suspicious. Nora, you have tons of broom out by your house. You should grab some sprigs of it and tie it with red thread if you can. There's also the St. John's wart. Broom, did you say? I assume that's some kind of plant? Uh, broom. Broom. Broom is a type of plant that fairies aren't terribly fond of it. Unsurprisingly, back in the day, the broom's people swept out their houses, which, with, were made, which were made with broom. I guess sprigs of broom have long been used as protection from fairies, and the plant has been used for a host of other things like healing disease and, supposedly, taming horses and dogs. Man. Versatile little thing, apparently. And the bell I gave you. Those things will help keep things settled for at least one night. That's fine, but we need a better solution than staying huddled in our rooms in fear for the next four and a half days. Look, if you can try to get your parents out of the house tomorrow, we'll come over and ward the hell out of your place. That'll keep everything at bay, I promise. And what if they keep coming after us even after Samhain? I don't think that'll be the case. At that point, this will become a big enough issue the agency may step in. I don't know. We'll need to cross that bridge if we get to it. Right. It was frustrating that we weren't a priority for the agency just because fairies were involved. Why did they get to run amok, do what they wanted, and face no consequences? Just because they were capable of being a nuisance? Then again, the Unseelies had a well-known and terrifying army. I guess it was hard to go against something like that. But still... For now, let's just get home. Yeah. At any rate, he seemed... better? I mean, he wasn't exactly gushing at me or anything, but he wasn't being hateful. He was just... normal. So I guess something good did come of all this? I was going to have to try to focus on that instead of whatever possible danger was lurking literally everywhere. We did what Ali said with the fairy banes. I gathered some broom. Hunted for red string to tie it up with. What is it with fairies and red anyway? Right? I showed Spencer the jar of herbs I'd gotten from Shelly. I spent a really long time explaining things like fairy banes and fairy favors. Something else we did. Looked everywhere for any of them that might remain. We only found a few, thankfully. Oh, and I told him about the brownie. I wasn't sure he totally believed me on that one until he awkwardly said he thought he saw it once. But he told himself it was a rat. Because, well, who just casually accepts a weird little person running around the house? We talked and talked... and talked. And when Mom and Dad came home, we pretended to sleep until they went to bed before we huddled in my room again and talked pretty much all night. And, you know, we're completely paranoid and freaked out. We kept checking the doors and windows and pacing around nervously. This is actually one of the best scenes between Spencer and Nora. I love that they just spent, like, the night talking and being like, Did you hear that? Are they here for us? Okay. Alright. Don't make a sound. Ugh. Oh. Pace, pace, pace. Talk, talk, talk. Pace, pace, pace. <laughs> Wake me up if I start falling asleep. Aw. Poor, poor guys. Yep. Neither of us slept. And nothing in particular happened. For one blissful night, things were silent. And yet... I couldn't help but feel the night was strangely tense. Like everything was holding its breath during a watchful calm and a terrifying storm was just around the corner.